How can we be in the world but not of the world? We hear this said often, but what exactly does it mean? Countless religious communities have dedicated their lives to this very mission, especially with the dawn of the new evangelization, as John Paul II put it. Focolare is one such movement. That's where we begin. The Focolare movement has been in North America for 50 years. To mark the anniversary, the movement's co-presidents, Maria Voce and Giancarlo Faletti, embarked on a month-long visit to Canada, the U.S., and Santo Domingo. Focolare was founded in 1943 during the Second World War when the movement's founder, Chiara Lubic, and her companions began to work among the poor and those in the bomb shelters of Trent in Italy. During the anniversary visit in Toronto, Giancarlo and Maria participated in an 80-minute question-and-answer forum. The questions touched on many themes including interfaith dialogue, ministries with young people, and the influence of secularism on our culture. Today, Focolare is made up of over 100,000 members stationed in over 182 countries. St. Francis of Assisi once said that the world is his cloister. Now this means that the work of the religious life or the religious life doesn't have any boundaries. Today more than ever the work of evangelization has no boundaries and nobody really knows this more than those who are working in the front lines. Joining me now are two people who are in the front lines. They're with the Focolare movement. Jeroen van der Biesen, uh, he's a consecrated member with the, with the movement. Yes. Welcome. And Tim King, you're on the Focolare's Central Council. And he'll explain a little bit about what that is in a second. But before that, we've just learned a little bit about Focolare, what it is. Why are groups like Focolare uh, important or necessary in our world? Yeah, I think that um, you know, the Focolare movement, it's an ecclesial movement, mm -hmm. right? Like there are many ecclesial movements in the church. And I like this uh, image that, um, of the church as a big garden where there are many flowers. And each movement represents a flower. And um, I think that uh, in order to make uh, a garden, a nice garden, uh -huh. you need a lot of flowers. So each movement has its importance. Right, right? okay, so it's, mm. it's, it's one part of this larger mosaic. Uh, that is the church? Yes. How important is it that it needs to be so organized that you have an a, a central council? And I mean, it's such an international movement. Are, are, are those aspects of the movement necessary, Tim, because it's so large? Or is there something kind of more important about the work that you do in the central council? Uh, well, es essentially, as a, as a movement, we're very focused on unity. We're mm -hmm. very focused on being one body uh, wherever we are in the world. Um, so a, a central council really serves that unity. So we have, we have members who bring together their expertise in the different as aspects of our lives, but also in different geographical areas of the world so that all of the world is present in that council at any one time. So the president and co-president can be uh, fully aware of what's going on in the world and right. we can also be fully aware and look at the movement as a whole throughout the whole world. Right. Mm -hmm. Now both of you are consecrated members, but you don't have to be a consecrated member to be part of Focolare. That's right. So anybody, families, married people, <coughs> single people, religious people, yeah. can all be part? The Focolare, uh, it's spirituality and also it's lifestyle. Uh, it's based on living out the gospel. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we want to put the, the words of the gospel into practice in daily life. And uh, this is something that everybody can live, right? And uh, by living out uh, the words of the gospel, um, we try to build towards this uh, unity that, that Tim mentioned before. Right. How would and you, sorry, go, no, go, go ahead. How would you describe your, your own personal vocation? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, c I could. I could pick up on that because uh, I remember thinking as a teenager very clearly, mm -hmm. you know, how was I going to, you know, what choice was I going to make in my life? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, for a, for a person who wanted to take their, their Christianity, their Catholicism seriously at the time, you had to consider being a priest. Right. You know, this was the main thing, you know, <coughs> either you were a priest or then you got married. And if you were married, really, that 
wasn't kind of a vocation at all. So the only way that people spoke about vocation then was if you became a priest mm -hmm. or religious. Mm -hmm. Now uh, that didn't kind of uh, that didn't uh, turn me on really mm -hmm. in terms of what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to give myself to God, uh, but I wanted to be in the world. And so uh, when I met uh, Focolare, I could see a match between. Mm -hmm the aspirations, if you like, God had planted in me and what this movement was doing. And so I, I realized that I could have a vocation and not be a priest. Mm. And uh, that vocation turned out to be, if you like, a consecrated one, but in a very lay way. So can I just, yeah. can I just go back to something that you said? Because it relates directly to the question that we've been asking. Because you said that you wanted to be, give your life to God, but you wanted to be in the world. I don't know if I know what that means. How can you not yeah. be in the world? <laughs> How can you not be? <laughs> I guess well, that's the question. Maybe uh, I can share a, a very brief experience here. Yeah. About, um, before coming to Canada, I worked in, an, uh, in a company for um, television productions in, uh, in for soccer matches. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I happened to be uh, in a convention um, in Monte Carlo in the south of France. Um, in a very, it's a very rich environment, and um, in the evening they organized uh, parties. And at a certain hour, um, to bring more entertainment, uh, they invited uh, photo models. A whole buzz of uh, photo models came in, and all of a sudden, this party uh, it changed character, right? And it was going towards something else. And of course, I'm, I was there, and I'm, as you said, I'm a consecrated member, right? Mm -hmm. And and I have my own principles and the values I stand for. And for me, being in the world, it means, like uh, St. Paul says, uh, to make myself one with the others, right? To lift the others. But at the same time, uh, I can make myself one with other people up to a certain point. So, and I felt, okay, at that point, I have to make a choice, mm -hmm. right? Whether I stay at, at the party or I leave and I'm free to do so. I'm free mm -hmm. to make this choice. Mm -hmm. um, so I told my colleagues, I look, uh, I have to prepare something for tomorrow morning. And I left, and I was walking uh, back to the hotel. And at that point, I felt a very strong joy inside, right? A very powerful joy. And, and I looked at this world of glitter and glamour, and it felt like, uh, say, okay, this is a reality, but it, it felt like fake, like paper. And what helps me uh, in those situations to be in the world but not of the world is this uh, link of unity. Uh, like we mentioned before, with the other people who try to mm -hmm. live the same lifestyle as I do. So I sent a text message to one of the people I was living with in the Focolare in Rome at the time, uh, just to make sure that we're on the same page, right? Just to say, look, uh, let's try to keep uh, this, this unity uh, alive. So I'm in this situation and, uh, and I felt that I think there, that's what uh, the strength comes from. To so being part to of the movement helped you make that choice? Because you, you're not suggesting that you, I, I need to be a consecrated person or a member of Focolare no. to be able to choose to not stay at that party. That's right. To me, it helps because, um, of course, uh, we all want to go like Christians in certain times against the current, right? Uh -huh. Against the current of this world. And we want to stand up to it. But when you stand up to it alone, in, uh, alone, we are weak and also the first Christians in the, in the early Christian communities, when they had like uh, a hard time or they needed uh, encouragement, they would go back to their to community. The community. So I think that even for us, uh, it's important that as our vocation is not to be in a, in a monastery, or, but be in the world and just work, uh, have jobs like everybody else. Mm -hmm. and, and especially, and I think that's the beauty, what also attracts me in the Focal Art Movement is that we really penetrate each yeah, uh, yeah, each reality of society, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me read you a comment because I think it relates uh, perfectly to your story. So this, again, same question. How can you be in the world but not of the world? Comment came in from Deanna Harbin, and she writes, Coming from an evangelical background, I knew exactly what it meant. We were always taught not to place emphasis on material things and to avoid and abstain from worldly things such as smoking, drinking, drugs, dancing, listening to rock music, premarital sex, and the list goes on. But I am yet to have a clear concept of what that would mean as a Catholic. 
Please forgive me. I am still learning how to reconcile the 25 years of my evangelical upbringing to my recent conversion to Catholicism. And I guess that what she's talking about is that struggle that maybe unless someone belongs to a religious community or to a movement or is a consecrated, I mean, you, have, you make vows, That's you take vows, <laughs> then all this other stuff, smoking, drinking, drugs, dancing, I mean, I don't know. Um, it just seems, as a Catholic, assuming you're both Catholic, um, that they're kind of unsure what that means. I don't know. How would you respond to Deanna, Tim? Well, it sounds like a whole list of prohibitions, really. You know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do the other. Uh, that's not uh, how I experience my consecration. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel a lot of freedom in my consecration. I think, you know, to go back to the previous uh, question, I think that, uh, you know, being in the world and not of the world, this, this kind of vocation to be there, is, is also because we're, we're going beyond the institutional church, if you like. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a role for the institutional church, and we love it. We go to it. We, you know, we belong to parishes. You know, we, we, we go to the liturgy. We do everything. But we, uh, when it becomes too identified with an institution, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's a blockage for people, right? Mm -hmm. And so to, to, to come forward to this, you know, if, if people see that, that Christians are uh, bound by a whole list of prohibitions that they can't mm -hmm. do stuff like, I mean, as a consecrated person, I love dancing, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't mean to say you can't dance, you yeah. know. Right. I mean, the type of dance you do may be, mm -hmm. may be right. important, or where you go dancing. But like, but for example, mm -hmm. sorry and yeah. to interrupt, but so did, did people, when you were working for that yeah. production company, did people say, oh, there's your own, he's not staying for the gr dancing girls because he's, you know, <coughs> a church boy? Well, uh, or did they see you as united, I mean, as one of them? Yeah, I want to... With principles. Okay, I take three vows, right? It's poverty, chastity, and obedience. So to me, the vow of poverty, it makes me free of material things. Mm -hmm. The vow of chastity, it makes me free of, of the other people. The vow of obedience, it makes me free of my own will. Yeah. So if I live out those three vows, I become a free person. And as a free person, I can be in any situation of the world and at times people actually made a little fun of me mm -hmm. but I well it's not actually really true it's more true that I uh, received lots of reaction of respect mm -hmm. um, and even in this uh, in this situation here I think that um, this freedom people um, I think we all have uh, an uh, how do you say a search for freedom inside mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but maybe somebody out of the blue shares uh, yeah. Yeah. shares an experience mm. for him or a moment of suffering or because they see a light. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, l like Tim said, I like it very much what he said that um, w it's not uh, living out vows. It's not a restriction. It's actually mm. the opposite, mm. and it makes you. I mean, I feel that makes me a more free person to love God in the others, yeah. and and try to be an instrument in the hands of God, right? Yeah. Because at the end, my, my, my consecration is with God. Right. Anyway, we need to take a little break, but it's a short break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back, and we're going to continue our conversation looking at uh, the work of evangelizing and what that looks like in this context. So don't go anywhere. Let us know your perspective. Email us at perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or reach us by mail, perspectives at saltandlighttelevision.org. 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1, or call us toll-free at 1-888-302-7181. Let your perspective be heard. I believe the importance of uh, focal area in the society is just that um, they just don't uh, say it, but they try to leave the gospel. You know, they try to do some concrete things. You know, with the members, and by that, uh, by that, doing such example, you know, uh, some people also being encouraged to do the same. You know, to uh, to see Jesus and the others, and to try to uh, be the first one to love. By caring, by doing acts of love, even for people that don't understand what God is or who God is. Um, at Deep inside, it just opens up new doors, and it just, it just, 
it's amazing how something so small can be so big, even to someone who doesn't even know the Focolare movement. Maria Voce really gave that great example that through the night, when the stars are out, it is only when the, we only see the greatest stars only when it's really dark. It seems to me that in a way what you were saying before, Jeroen, mm -hmm. has to do with evangelizing. I mean, you were living a certain lifestyle, uh, you had certain principles that people saw, and whether they agreed with it or not, that they respected you, and that if they had the opportunity to have a conversation with you about suffering or whatever that may be, because everybody uh, lives life, that they felt they could approach you because they had seen that in you. Do you find that that's a similar experience for you, Tim? In, in, in terms of how you evangelize without evangelizing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I think the, the key is, the, is an idea that I think we found very strongly, one that comes from, uh, from St. Paul, really, making yourself all things to all men, to win as mm -hmm. many over to Christ. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, in, in any situation you go in, you try as much as possible to take on board that situation, to be uh, as one as possible with, with that person or that situation. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, just to clarify, because you've said this a few times, so t when you say to be one with, that's what you mean? That you try to find a connection. We're trying to find a connection. Yeah, I mean, but without giving up your convictions. I think there's well, fundamentally, it's it's a spiritual attitude really to place the other in the prime position in your life whenever you're with that person, mm -hmm. to see Jesus in that other person, to uh -huh. see Christ in that other person, and know if that person hasn't any any form of faith, you know, potentially that person could have, right. because love uh, and the gospel is a DNA written in every human being. We have to be convinced of that. So we have to be the instruments by which that c that can come out. Mm. D is it fair to say that the Focolare as a movement has a mission to uh, people people who don't have a formal faith? Well, I, I think mm. if you think of the way we want to work uh, in the world, you know, not dressed in clerical gear and whatever, that's that's pretty obvious. You know, this is a a way in which people can can have the church come to them without perhaps realizing that this is the church. But do you set yeah. out with that mission to evangelize in that sense? Oh, I think so, yeah, very definitely so, because we would all like as many people as possible to be won over to, to the love of Christ. I mean, mm. that's, mm. that's what we want, really, as Christians. But I would distinguish, if you like, the, the two words that I've seen used in my life, evangelism and evangelization. Uh -huh. Evangelism tends to take with it the connotation that you're trying to force something on somebody right. or you're trying to convince them of something or, or, or you know whereas evangelization is something that first and foremost you do to yourself mm. right you have to live the gospel you have to be evangelized uh, and when you live the gospel together with other people you become an evangelizing community yeah. That, and so it's the community as well as you individually right. that evangelizes. Okay. But you never lose sight of, of that target because that's what we want. Let me read to you another comment. Uh, this came in from Monica Chagoya. Same question. Uh, how can we be in the world and not of the world? And Monica says, by practicing the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity, the four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, temperance, and courage, and the seven heavenly virtues, chastity, temperance, charity, diligence, patience, kindness, and humility. The best modern example, I think, is Mother Teresa. She catechized by example, living the faith. So in a way, is that what you're saying? That if you live the gospel, you live lives of virtue, if we want to call it that, then somehow that will, God can evangelize people through that because people will see that light. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that... Uh, we speak about collective sanctity. We, we mm -hmm. talk about, you know, becoming saints together mm -hmm. because we're not out on our own, right? So we're helping one another. The relationships we have, you know, both within our consecrated communities and also with a, with a wider movement right. is all with, with that aim. And we're, we're building up one another in Christ. We're building mm -hmm. up this perfection. Mm -hmm. So we can help one another. We can correct one another, you know, and so the whole thing grows. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to ask you both, just as we c maybe conclude, how would you personally answer that question? How can we be in the world but not of the world? Do you feel that you are able to live that? <laughs> I think that's that's what our lives are about. You yeah. know, being in the world but not of the world. You know? Yeah. 
so it's and possible. What <laughs> I, I think it's what what I like. What um, I believe Kara Lubick once said that uh, being perfect doesn't mean being without mistakes. Mm. It's the perfectionism. It stands in starting over each ca each time yeah. when one falls, right? And I think that's the the beauty because there. Uh, it's also the love of God who who's merciful and who helps us to go yeah. to go ahead together. Right? Yeah. Okay, we have to leave it there, but we're going to conclude uh, by reflecting on the uh, a portion from this Sunday's gospel. Um, we always leave the last words to the one who is the word. So this is from John chapter four. Jesus said to them, "My food is to do the will of Him who sent me and to complete His work. Do you not say?" Four months more, then comes the harvest. But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. So that's uh, from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 34 to 38. Jeroen, would you like to share something? Well, what comes to mind here to me is uh, um, that actually we are called to live out the will of God in the present moment without uh, thinking about the future or who's going to harvest, who is uh, seeding, but trying to find this, uh, this fulfillment of joy in living out the will of God in this very present moment. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Tim? Yeah, uh, I would say it's, a, it's a, very, a very strong focus in my life, really, is to try and discern what the will of God, you know, for Jesus to call it food, means it's, mm. it's essential to your life to do the will of God. It's like our response to, to God's love for us. Mm -hmm. So that if you, if you reflect on the fact that God loves you, how do you respond to that? You respond to that by trying to do his will yeah. and and you mm. know that's that's everyday present moment stuff you know loving in each moment other people that's mm. good well thank you those are hopeful messages the conversation has to end here but the discussion continues on Facebook facebook.saltandlighttv.org log in tell us how you think you can be in the world but not of the world our two guests today have been uh, two consecrated members with the Focolare movement Jeroen Var <laughs> Van, Van Der Biesen. I forgot Thank to you. say that Jeroen actually uh, works here at Salt and Light Television as well. So he's one of our, uh, our pillars at Salt and Light Television behind the scenes. And with him was Tim King, who's in the Central uh, Council for Focolare. Um, this has been really, really insightful. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Um, if you want to find out more about the Focolare movement, you should go to their website, focolare.org. Very easy, you can select the, the option for English at the top there and, and learn all about Focolare and uh, maybe how you can, 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 can get involved. And you should also visit our website, saltandlighttv.org slash perspectives to watch this program or any Perspectives program or also to send us your comments. You know we cannot do this show without your perspective. So that's all for tonight. Have a great weekend and may God bless you and your home. <laughs>